Okay, one last little piece to kind of pull this all together. And it's going to happen at the, in the table at the bottom of this page. But first, I want to explain to you, some people think that the cosine of 360 degrees would be the same thing as 2 times the cosine of 180, because they think they can distribute that 2 times 180 and get cosine 360. Not the case. So these problems are kind of asking you to think in a little bit different way about how these two statements compare. Is one of them greater than the other or less than the other or are they equal to? And so to finish this off, I want you to think about the cosine of 360 degrees. So I'm trying to focus on the fourth quadrant here. And I'm going to draw an angle that's not quite 360 degrees. I'm going to draw something that's, you know, 355 degrees is what I'm trying to draw. And I'm going to drop a straight line to the x-axis and call that a right triangle. And remember that the cosine of this 355 degrees is defined as this positive x value divided by this hypotenuse, which is positive also. And would you notice that the size of x is pretty close to the size of r? So their, their values, and if you took the cosine of 355, you'd get close to 1, but not exactly 1. When I move all the way around the full circle, the r value becomes, lies on the x-axis, and x and r are the same. So you have the same value divided by the same value. So it's equal to 1. So if you type the cosine of 360 on your calculator, you'd get 1. So I just wanted you to see why. Now let's go over here to a 180 degree angle and let's think about 175 degree angle. So let's just kind of, in order for you to understand what the calculator is going to do for us, let's talk about that. Again, I'm going to show via an arc in red here. I'm now talking about that 175 degree angle. Well, the value um, for that is a negative x divided by a positive r. So again, the x side and the r side, though, at 175 degrees are close to the same size. And when you go actually all the way to the 180 degrees, r lies on top of x. And you have the same two numbers, but one is, uh, where am I going to write this? One is a negative number, and the other is a positive number, but they're the same length, and you get a negative 1. So what you have here is 2 times a negative 1. Type it on your calculator. C of 2 times the cosine of 180 gives you a negative 2. And finally, we know then that the number 1 is greater than a negative 2, and we'd insert this symbol. Likewise, and I'm not going to take the time to explain why, but if you, if you type on your calculator the sine of 270, you're going to get a negative 1. And that's because the y and the r value are the same at 275 degrees, but y is negative. The sine of 90 degrees, you're going to find, is equal to a positive 1. And so 3 times 1, or 3 times the sine of 90, will be 3. And so a negative 1 is less than 3, so I'd put a less than symbol in here. Now this one's kind of interesting. So if I draw a 20 degree angle, it says use the fact that the cotangent of a 20 degree angle, so let's go about like this or so, is equal to 2.747 divided by 1. I need to do that in order to label the sides of this right triangle. So cotangent is not the side opposite over the side adjacent, it's the side adjacent over the side opposite. Remember here's your theta right here. So again, that's a 20 degree angle that I tried to draw. They want me, without a calculator, Without a calculator, they want me to evaluate a 290 degree angle, find the tangent of 290 degrees. So I'm going to go over here to 270, and I'm going to draw a 20 degree angle off of that 270. But in order to refer to this 290 degree angle, I'm going to drop the perpendicular to the x-axis right there, and I'm going to now see, I'm going to highlight this I think in green, this triangle right here is the same one as the right triangle in the first quadrant, 
but that this green right triangle has a side right here whose size is 2.747. I actually think I'm going to bring it out here. So I'm going to go like this and like this and like this. So this represents that 270 degree angle. But this side, I've got to use my pencil, is 2.747 and this side is 1. Remember this one's x and this one's y. Well, the tangent of 290 degrees is equal to the y value divided by the x value. The y value in this case is a negative 2.747 and the x value is equal to 1. So the tangent of 290 degrees, if I touch it on my calculator, should be equal to just a negative 2.741. I'm going to put that negative sign right there. All right, in closing, mostly sine and cosine, what I want you to see is I'd like you to just go ahead and type your calculator and, um, and see what the sine of zero degrees is. I'm just going to do a few of these. The sine of zero degrees, you should get zero for that. Um, here's a, a quick picture of that. I, I'm going to use something like a 10 degree angle. So this angle right there is 10 degrees. And sine is defined as this side opposite over the hypotenuse. So for a 10 degree angle, the side opposite is very small divided by the hypotenuse. So sine of 10, I don't know what it is, but it, it's going to be a very small decimal value, so, um, something close to zero. But when this hypotenuse lies right on this x-axis, the side opposite disappears. So the reason the sine of zero is equal to zero is because that side opposite disappears. When you go up to 90 degrees, the side opposite and the side and the hypotenuse are the same number, and so you get one. And when you wrap yourself around to 180 degrees, you get zero again and then when you go down to 270 because sine is defined as y over r and my y value at 270 is negative I'll get a negative one and finally if I type the sine of 360 degrees that's the same thing as the sine of zero and I'm back to where I started and I get a value of zero I'd like to look at these numbers and I'd like to take and graph those on um, graph paper just going out in the x direction thinking about and I'm taking you way forward now if I graph the trig functions they create a wave form and they repeat after I've gone through 360 degrees so what I want you to know is I'm gonna go out on the x-axis so now I'm just graphing ordered pairs 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees 360 degrees and I could keep moving on out and notice that these values for y my answer for these go anywhere from 0 to 1 and from 0 to a negative 1 so I'm gonna plot uh, this ordered pair at 0 degrees the sine of 0 is 0 at 90 degrees the sine of 90 is 1 so I'm gonna come up here and put that dot at 180 degrees, the sine of 180 is back to zero again. And then when I go to 270 degrees, the sine of that is a negative one. So I have now dropped down here for a value at sine 270 down below the x-axis. And then finally when I get to 360, I go back to zero again. Now if I did some values between zero and 90, this is not a straight line relationship. This is uh, something that looks like this in the form of a wave. So I'm graphing the sine of, I wish the increments were equal right there, and I'm going down now here to 270 and back to 360 and this goes on and repeats in both directions. Lastly, what I want you to notice is the wave is above the x-axis between 0 and 190 degrees and we have said that the sine of an angle is positive in the first quadrant, it's positive in the second quadrant, and it goes negative in the third and stays negative in the fourth and then we go back again through this wave and there's so many applications of this light waves sound waves and we could go on and on and on I'm not going to do much more with this but I just want you to know that the cosine of 0 would be equal to 1 and the cosine of 90 is 0 negative 1 0 
and 1. And if we graphed a wave that represents the cosine of an angle, the only difference for this one is that it's out of phase by 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and, and similarly put the 90, the 180, the 270, the 360. And I'm doing this for you to see where this were headed down the road with this. This is 1, this is negative 1. And the first ordered pair, when uh, the angle is 0 degrees, cosine is equal to 1. At 90 degrees, cosine is 0. At 180 degrees, cosine is a negative 1. It goes back to 0, and it goes back up to a positive 1. So would you please, I'm using blue for positive, would you remember that the cosine of an angle is, uh, is positive in the first quadrant? Cosine's not positive again until the fourth quadrant. So cosine goes negative in the second, it stays negative in the third, and cosine of an angle is positive in the fourth quadrant, and this wave representing the cosine of an angle goes on in either direction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and label this one. This one is the graph of y equals the cosine of theta. This one is the graph is y equals the sine of theta. And please notice that they are both waves, but one is just, if you just shifted this one back 90 degrees, you'd have the cosine curve. So if you just move this way. We'll talk about this in the applications as we move on further through our videos.